Welcome to another episode of Wedding to Wife. I'm your host, Jennifer Allen. And if you are new here on Wedding to Wife, we talk about all things wedding planning all the way to wife life, because we all know it is so much more than just getting that ring. Today, we are having a conversation with Jessica, and she is a real bride who is going to tell us all about her unique and fabulous wedding experience. Jessica, thank you so much for being here today. Hello, everybody out there on podcast land. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us all about you. I know you. I've known Jessica for years so uh -huh. to tell everyone else who you are. So I am Jessica Usman. Uh, I am a entrepreneur. So I own a wig store in, well, now we're in Dallas, but like Addison, Dallas, um, called Lavish Locks Hair Company. I also am a licensed realtor and I am a new mom and a new wife pretty much. So yeah, and I'm a Dallas native. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a, a lot. You know, I have, like I said, I've known you for a long time and I've always known you to be fabulous and so put together. So it was no surprise to me that your wedding was all the things. That and wedding was a lot. It was a lot. It was gorgeous. And if you are watching this on YouTube right now, then you are seeing pictures of this fabulous wedding. Um, and if okay. you are listening, you need to make sure that you go over to YouTube so you can you can check it out. Um, I really want you to just kind of walk us through the beginning. Let's start at your at your proposal. Okay. Was your proposal your dream proposal? Did you have a dream proposal? And did it live um, up to your So I never thought about the proposal. I always thought about my ring. So I had a dream ring. Um, so my dream ring is like the ring that I have, which is like a pear-shaped diamond. I wanted a bigger solid, I mean, center stone with little diamonds around it and all that good stuff. So that the proposal, I knew it was happening um, because, you know, people can't hold water. So I had a homegirl of mine, or I would say an associate, she was dating one of my husband's friends, right? And she, I got engaged on a Friday. She texted me on a Thursday telling me, congratulations on your engagement. And I was just like, I already really? knew. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not lying. And I was like, I won't say her name. I won't say her name. I was like, hey, I'm not engaged. And she's like, oh my gosh, Jessica, I'm so sorry. I was there stuff, but I just knew, like I knew it was happening. Cause one time I was riding in the car with my mom and she was like playing with her ring. She's like, my mom lost a lot of weight. And so she's like, my ring's so big on my finger. You know, she's like, oh, it's just going all around. And so it's like, she took it off and she was like, does it fit your finger? And so I was like, put on my finger. I was like, oh, she trying to get my ring size. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, it feels good. And then um, <laughs> what else happened? Um, my husband, he was like, he had just bought a home, right? And so he was like, we're going to do the housewarming party and so we got a and we got engaged like right after covid so everyone was like so eager to get out and so he's like well i want to do a two-part house party and i was like why i mean housewarming party i was like why i was like that's just like that sounds exhausting and he was like well the first one i wanted just to be family and close friends and then the second one everybody wants to come to celebrate you and i was like celebrate me for what like it's his birthday because we got okay. engaged yeah, we got engaged his birthday weekend. And I was like, celebrate me for what? Like, it's your birthday. And I was like, oh, I get it. Like, whatever. And then my proposal, my sister called herself acting. And so um, his family had came over and my family had came over. And I literally was exhausted because I've been ripping and running all day. Like, trying to get this house together. And one of the things was, I was like, well, I'm not moving in with you until I have a ring. Like. I don't okay. care you bought this house, even though I picked out the house, I picked out the finishings and all those things. That was like my one stipulation. So then after that, um, everyone's over there. It was getting kind of late. And I was talking to one of my best friends. She was like, friend, is it going to happen? I was like, it got to be happening because 
already been, you know, congratulated. Like everything's just falling into right. place, whatever. And then so my sister was like, she acted like she was having a panic attack. And so she was like, I need you upstairs with me. And I'm like, Ashley. <laughs> I said, Ashley. I said, Mama's here. Go grab Mama. She can help you sort out this panic attack. And so she was like, oh, oh, like all this other stuff. I was like, are you okay? So she's like, yeah, I'm fine. And so I said, well, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quickly. So I go to the bathroom. I brush my hair. I put on more lip gloss. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this must be happening. Right. And then so... <clears throat> I went downstairs, everybody was gone. They were out in the backyard. Yeah. And then he had like some rose petals on the floor. And then he just got down in front of his friends and family and my friends and family and asked me to be his wife. I don't remember what he said, but something about the luckiest man in the world or some something like cliche, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, and it was just like, I was like, okay. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready to see my ring. like. Did you give right. me my dream ring? Because this is great, yes. Yeah. But um, did you give me my dream ring? And so then he opened it, and it was my dream ring. I was like, yeah. Because he had asked me to send me, so we dated for two and a half years before we got engaged. And three months into us dating, he asked me what kind of ring I wanted. Right. So he had, like, kept the ring picture of it. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, perfect. And that was bigger than what I expected. And so I was mm -hmm. like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that you would have known that had the girl not text you that Thursday? Do you think all the other things would have made you suspicious, or do you think that is what was just got the ball rolling? It was the combination of like everything because okay. when my mom asked me for my ring size, that was way before, and then my then he was we were in his backyard talking and he had started saying well they just want to celebrate you and i was like oh he must be trying to do that like right. like i don't know it's just like his thought process was like mm -hmm. i know you well enough right. to know so i think it just was a combination and then when she said it it just co you know confirmed like okay it's happening so mm -hmm. after the proposal happened from that point how long before you got married so we got engaged on October the 16th of 2020, and then we got married September the 18th of 2021, so less than a year. Okay. And did you immediately start planning, or were you like, okay, let me just enjoy the engagement, or what happened? Um, no, we immediately started planning. Like, the next day after our engagement, we had that big party and I was like exhausted and then it was like well he was like well you said you're gonna move in now and so then it was a process of me moving in but fairly quickly like after I moved in it was like I already knew who I wanted my wedding planner to be because my cousin had got married some years ago but her wedding was so beautiful and to me it was like so organized so I was like oh hey Stacey like who was your wedding planner so I already had the wedding planner and stuff like that. So I would say we probably started planning. If we got engaged in October, September, let me maybe we start planning November, December. Okay. So when yeah. you first started planning, what was what were some of the things that gave you sticker shock? Like not how much they cost per se, but when you started the process of, oh, I would like to have this or this at my wedding. And then you found out how much it costs. Like, what were some of those things? Flowers. <laughs> Ooh, baby, Re hold flowers on. Blow a budget. Look, and, and then you tell my real or fake. And the fake ones cost just as much as the real ones. So, <laughs> like, and it doesn't really matter. I do not understand. People uh -uh. think that fake flowers are going, silk flowers are going to save them <laughs> all this money. And it's not. The only time you save money with silk flowers is if your wedding planner already has hundreds upon thousands uh -huh. in their yeah. armory of supplies Agreed. and they're just rolling that in because anything that has to be purchased has to be purchased baby and then the other thing that was like the shocker for me is like yes you know like head count right mm -hmm. but you have to also think about if i add one more person or one more table yes it's this amount per person 
but then it's like per table like <laughs> right. how much and then like i well i gathered liquor would be expensive mm -hmm. but an open bar top shelf liquor it's, it was just like like huh how much is we gonna pay for liquor like they just gonna pee it out yeah and that's one of the questions <laughs> i went to essence and one of the questions that i asked people was um, how do they feel about cash bars at weddings? And it was a resounding, it's tacky. At any point, did did you ever think like, maybe we should do a cash bar? Uh, absolutely not. The only thing I wish we would have did, so we had, obviously we had a cocktail hour. We had open bar at the cocktail hour. We had open bar at the reception. Mm -hmm. And then we also had a champagne hour, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I wish we would have done the cocktail hour, like just based on like the hours and not on consumption because towards the end, like once they sent us the final bill, they mm -hmm. tried to say that everybody consumed this crazy amount of liquor in this mm -hmm. one hour versus during the whole hour, hours of the reception, mm -hmm. they consumed more during the cocktail hour than they did in the reception. Mm -hmm. How many? But they were. So originally, it was supposed to be 400 guests, right? I own 400. How do you know 400 people? I don't. My husband is Nigerian. And so I feel like he was inviting everybody. It was just oh like God. this person, that person, this person, that person. Oh, can I bring my cousin to your wedding? Can I bring this person to your wedding? And for me, it was like I only wanted max 200, you know? Mm -hmm. Matt, like you get a hundred, I get a hundred. Like we had to cut down that guest list so many times. And then it just got to the point where it's like, if they just come after we eat, we don't care. Like okay. after okay. everyone eats, if they just want to come drink at the bar, it, we pay for it, drink it up. You know what right. I mean? Y'all come at nine. Y'all come at, yeah, come at nine. Y'all come at 10, whatever. But just don't come when we eat. Cause if you come when we eat, they gonna escort you out. Right. So yeah. It just was a lot. It was, I was like that. Um, also, so in my wedding, we had this, um, one of the things that I wanted was hanging flowers. Mm -hmm. And so that little thing alone was maybe, it was a lot of money, Jen. It was oh, like, wow. they, they charged us 5,000 just to rig it, just to put it up. Yeah. Not the flowers. Not flowers. <laughs> That's what people don't understand. Those flowers that are hanging are not fresh, fresh flowers because especially when you get it at your reception, because the petals will fall into your food. Exactly. Or they would die. I remember yeah. the episode that you were on of Brat Loves Judy and mm -hmm. the brat was talking about the flowers. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, them silk flowers is not cheap. I don't no. know. No. Yeah. yeah, it just was a lot. So yeah, those flowers are crazy. And then trying to think of what else oh so since my husband is nigerian in order for us to bring culture food that's not catered through the venue mm -hmm. we had to pay an extra fee per person so wow. yeah we had to pay 50 dollars per person that's not including the food that we're bringing but that paying the chef that's just per person so if 200 people said they wanted Nigerian food, that was 200 times 50 just to permit us to do it. Then on top of that, pay the for the actual plate, the food. Wow. I, yeah. I, I don't have any other words except for wow, because that is crazy. That's why I was praying. Y'all sure y'all don't want this food from the fourth season? But then it was like we gave everybody seven options they could choose from and so you know black people very like like oh my black is real i want to try nigerian food so they oh, right, right. <laughs> now you out here wasting a plate because exactly and then if they didn't choose they got american chicken because that was the cheapest yeah. oh chicken mm -hmm. yeah just so they had to show you how the wedding industry is set up for it's such a money grab because oh yes i would love to have a conversation with them to really get some understanding of 
where does this number come from? Like, where does this $50 per person come from? I would love to know where that comes from because that's yeah. insane to me. It was. It was. So our wedding basically was about $255 per person. If you like calculated it with the liquor and with the food. And that's barely counting decorations, like to put a tablecloth yeah. on the table. Yeah. So. Now, what made you choose that venue? So my cousin that I mentioned before, she had got married there. And I just remember her wedding was so pretty to me. I was like, oh, the Four Seasons is, it's so nice. And it was just like when we toured the other places, it was the one thing that I wanted. I wanted to get married have my wedding and have the reception in one place because I don't really like that whole traveling in between time. I don't like the dead time. So that was the easiest way. And then also I wanted to have my wedding outside and have the reception inside. So it was the, like one of the few places in Dallas that were really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, that gave you that feel of like luxury. Um, that yeah so it was just like okay yeah they're gonna give us everything that we want and when they're selling it it sounds like you're getting a lot but baby do they tax you oh jesus because yeah. when you get married a hotel they also charge like a hotel tax and it's like all these other taxes that are on there you're like wait a minute why why yeah. where is extra coming from that yeah what happened to a 0.825 percent what mm -hmm. is this now 16% hotel yep. tax that you've added yep. on here? The resort fee. The a resort fee. Baby, where the food? And, and, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because this is this yes. crazy. But getting married at a hotel does have its perks because, of course, people could stay mm -hmm. there for the evening. So that worked out well. So you're going through all this planning. Once you sat down and decided on it, you pick the food then you start thinking about entertainment now for those of you who are listening one of the main reasons why I wanted to interview Jessica is because although I knew anything that she was associated with was going to be ultra fabulous my mind was blown when I saw her wedding pictures and genuine was at the wedding <laughs> I'm like now wait a minute I said what yeah. How you did, did you? Thing. How did you get? How did that come to be? What was the initial conversation that was had to say genuine should be at our wedding? So originally, all the entertaining stuff was my husband's idea. Mm -hmm. He was like, "We got to have an entertainer." Originally, it was just gonna be one person. Like okay. that was it. And so first, we talked to um, you. You know Desi, right? Yeah. Desi know everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So his his Instagram is you know Desi, right? <laughs> right. So basically Desi was like our 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 point of contact, right? Okay. okay. And so um <clears throat> he was like we first he was like, Well what who are y'all thinking? And I think the first person we thought of was who did we think Beyonce. of first? I wish, girl. Look, if we have Beyonce. I think the first person we thought of was, oh my gosh, maybe 112. Okay. 112, Jagged Edge. Um, mm. The only thing with, oh, Drew Hill. Mm. The only thing with those people is you couldn't get all of them. And so, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's like, if I can't get all the four of the original members, I don't really want it. And then he thought of, Donnell Jones, which was fine, but I was like, there's not enough, like, he not gonna yeah. give me what I want, right? Hey, so, we not together no more. Yeah, where I wanna be, like, right. oh, it was like, we would have sung along, but it wasn't yeah. gonna give us that, that mm -hmm. moment. And then he had said someone else, um, I don't even remember who the other person was. First of all, one of the people wanted too much money. Mm -hmm. They was like forty thousand dollars, and it was like, excuse me, how much forty thousand dollars? No, you and then every day for a year in person at our no. house, we cook breakfast. That's in my salary. Yes, but uh, then my husband came home, and he was like, "Well, my fiance at the time, he was like, what about genuine?'" And I was like, "The same OG, 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I used to have a crush on him. Like, yes. yes. <laughs> I was I, like, yes. I was like, Cash, that's a good one. That's a good one. I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, I think I can get genuine. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuine it is. And so we had told no one. We were like, don't tell anybody. Um, because we wanted it to be a surprise to everybody. Yeah. So then Genuine was solidified and it basically was the contact through Desi, right? Okay. Desi knows everybody. Okay. Then the Nigerian artist, my husband or my fiance at the time, his brother is like famous, whatever. And yeah. so oh, um you heard that last name. We I think those of you that know know. <laughs> yeah. And so um they travel back and forth to Nigeria. And so like, you know, they know all like the artists over there, like Burner Boy and all those mm -hmm. things and stuff like that. And so there's this one girl that has the connect to all of the Nigerian artists for okay. some reason. And so he, huh? He's their Desi. Their Desi. Yeah. Yeah. A girl. And so, um, she was like, he wanted this one artist, which was the artist, I don't forgot his name, something with the G. I don't know what his name is. But he was like, oh, she was like, well, I have his wife and his wife sings too. Her name is Simi. Okay. And so Cash loves Simi. His dad loves Simi. And so he was like, I'm going to get Simi. I'm going to be honest. I told him no. I was like, I don't think you really need Simi. He was like, why? I said, she has a beautiful voice. She's a great singer, but she's, it's kind of like their, uh, What's that girl's name? Janae Aoki. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It's like she's kind of mellow. Yeah, she's kind of yeah. mellow and chill. She's not mm -hmm. really like genuine. Gonna keep them here, and right. she's gonna keep them like here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, it's not giving you party vibes, but he wanted her. So, anyways, she came. She did a great job, um, mm -hmm. but it was the same like kind of like. Mm. And then mm -hmm. the last one. I didn't know about until he walked in, which was techno and techno was in town performing somewhere else. Okay. And the same person was like, Hey, you know, whatever, this, the connection. And he made it happen literally like the day of the wedding. And then mm. techno came in at the very last minute. So it was like, y'all gave us a, you know, a whole concert. And I was like, well, I didn't know about the last one. I knew about the first two, but I didn't know about the, the last one. So did, did they have any like wild accommodation re requests? Like we need first class tickets and uh, chill champagne. And did they have any crazy, anything that you would do? Um, like? Nothing crazy. Genuine's thing was his manager was so nice. He was so nice. He mm -hmm. asked, could he hang out after? He was like, do you mind if I stay? <clears throat> at y'all's wedding and he took pictures with everybody like, everybody yeah. yeah we was like yeah and so he had his our security the security was surrounding him but he wanted to walk around he wanted to talk he wanted to mix and mingle his only request was like this strange vodka that i never heard of but his person was like he okay with like gray goose or belvedere <laughs> like he didn't right. care and so um like here's the reception hall and then we had a long hallway with three rooms, right? Um, three, like, not boutique, what do you call them? Banquet rooms. And those mm -hmm. were our green rooms. And that's where they held the guests, like the celebrity guests. Mm -hmm. And so we just had to, um, once again, have to give the Four Seasons their request, right? And the Four Seasons gave, did the list. So if they asked for Skittles or whatever the case may be, that was it. Genuine, literally, all he asked for was liquor and mixers. <laughs> okay. um we did have to pay for his flights and his no the fee covered his flight in his hotel oh, okay. and so we just yeah the fee covered his flight in his hotel and he sang five songs um Simi, oh, wow. he was really like i mean like yeah for him to be here especially for right. our generation i right, mean like right. he gave a show he sang he put on he smelled good he looked good yeah. all of those things Right. Simi, her accommodations were like, her fee was lower, but she asked for a hotel room and she needed two hotel rooms for her and her baby. Like her mm -hmm. baby, she just had a child, so it was like a joint room, mm -hmm. but she didn't require anything there. Techno, he was in and out, so he didn't really require anything mm -hmm. but his fee. But yeah. So with Simi, did y'all have to fly her from Nigeria? 
she was already here no she already lives in houston oh okay okay Mm -hmm. Or she lives somewhere. I think it's Houston. Because her and T.Y. Savage live both in Houston. I think she lives in Houston. Yes. So we yeah. just flew her from Houston. I mean, like, somebody go pick her up and bring her here at this yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that, that is such... Because you, you often hear and see these celebrities that perform. Major is one that you see a lot lately. He's been performing. This is why I love you. Mm -hmm. As they come down the aisle. And I've always wondered... How do you get in touch with these people? Are do, is, is it just like booking, you know, anybody? But had y'all not known Desi, what route would you have taken to secure? I don't know. I've known Desi pretty much all my life, so I don't really know. I'm okay. certain there was somebody. I'm certain also, you know, a lot of times if you go to their Instagram, they'll have for booking mm -hmm. email, like in the thing. So I'm certain we just probably would have went yeah. through that um I feel like the Nigerian artists were easier you know okay. because like he runs in that circle already I feel like the American artists were a little harder but because we do know him it just made it easier yeah. to book somebody yeah okay so when you were looking at your other vendors because obviously if you are having a wedding of this caliber you can't just show up in a dress from Davis Bridal. Like, it, mm -mm. it just doesn't match. So who did, did your wedding dress? Oh my, I just went blank. Um, Essie. Essie. There we go. I couldn't think of her name. I could see her face. I could picture the place. Everything. So while, Essie, you just had a baby. And trust me, when, when people say mom brain is a thing, who you people laugh me? about that until they have kids. Mm -mm. It's a totally different thing. Yeah, be like, now what was I doing? I walked in here and I was uh, okay. You got a little yeah, so on your brain, like, are they still breathing? Like you're exactly. kind of looking at whether you realize it or not, and so other yes. stuff just kind of floats around. I wake up in the middle of the night, be like, oh yeah. moving. okay, cool. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, Essie. So I had a total of four dresses, right? Okay. Not for that wedding. So, you know, Nigerian culture, you have a traditional wedding and then you have your white wedding. So right. for the traditional wedding, there was some local person that my mother-in-law had made the dresses, but we're not talking about that wedding. We talk mm -hmm. about this one. Mm -hmm. So for this wedding, the white wedding, I had one dress made by Essie and then I had another one custom made by my best friend's mom, who mm -hmm. is a dressmaker. Okay. So I had a white dress and then I had a red dress. Oh, okay. Which is traditional for like um his um his tribe. Okay. So yeah, so the Essie dress, the that whole experience is worth every penny. That's what I hear. I hear working I always hear that if you go to Essie to get a dress, you are having an experience. You're not just you getting a dress. Even my dress was one of her I don't want to say off the rack because nothing's off the rack, but it wasn't like a custom made dress. Yes, I took things and I added to it. So it made the price, you know, increase. But it was like, even when you walked in, it was just like, I don't know. It was just like, I was in awe because you see her and you see these beautiful gowns that she creates. Yeah. And then you walk in and she's there. And I didn't think she was going to be there. And I was like, you're going to do my my fitting she goes yes why would i not and i go because like i figured she would be gone somewhere right, right, she's like right. no she says i like to be here for my brides and and she wasn't there just there the first time she was there like the second time mm. and then the third time she wasn't there when i picked it up but she was right. there it never was a here you go i'm gonna pass you off to my associate and then so it's like you walk in she gives you the champagne and i don't know what kind of champagne this is but i like hennessy right mm -hmm. this champagne i was like whoa <laughs> what, what, is, <laughs> what, is what, is, what, what is this and she doesn't care how many people you bring you know okay. and she just you know she has you walk through her boutique and it's not big it's a lot of beautiful dresses mm -hmm. she first they first email you Mm -hmm. to tell you my dress is start at this price okay if you can't afford this price don't even come in here don't even come in here right okay. so once you understand like this is the base price i mean like base, five base, figures, base price we're talking base price five thousand dollars 
Okay. Is a base price. Like, right. and that's me, like, no wham, no nothing, yeah. right? Then if you're okay with that, then you're cool. The custom dresses at that time started at 10. No, 10 or 20. I don't remember. Somewhere okay. in that range. And so it was like, okay, from there, you go in, you try, you pick through the dresses that are there. Obviously, they do the, the normal clamping. Yeah. They have heels, and she shows you what embellishment she can add to it, and she takes your measurements and all that stuff, and it's just an experience. You don't feel rushed. You're only really there for about 45 minutes to an hour, but you just don't feel rushed. And then after that, you kind of are like, yeah, like, because I told myself, I'm only spending this amount. Right, right. Only. And my mom was like, just go ahead and do it. Like, just go ahead and do it. Because I bought my dress myself. Okay. And so I was just like, what? Like, and my mom's like very budget conscious. Mm -hmm. She's like, just go ahead and do it. Because when I tried it on and then they added the embellishments that I wanted. And then I had this long cathedral veil. Mm-hmm. And so they added all of that. It was just like, yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is so it. I, it was the one. And then I had other appointments at bridal boutiques, but it was just like, we had went to one before, right? Before I had my appointment consultation with her, because we had the consultation on my birthday. So December okay. the 5th. Mm-hmm. And we had went to these other, just, you know, yeah. normal boutiques. The dress was pretty, but it just was like, mm. yeah, <laughs> like. When I tried that dress on, it was just like perfect. Yeah. Perfect. It's like and she they built me in this dress. Like I mean Exactly. To... Yes, pony. <laughs> Let's go. Like Ain't I... none of your friends' business. Right. I, and so I didn't see everything. Yeah, so it just was an experience and she was super nice, very personable. And her whole staff was it was just it was beautiful. I I would that's the one thing I would spend every dollar on again now you said that you pay for your your own wedding dress and did you have did y'all have any other like significant assistance with paying for your wedding uh-huh. okay okay my mom and my daddy a okay. lot okay. okay um his brother okay and um his his parents yeah his mm-hmm. parents yeah I'm trying to remember who all, and then obviously, you know, we did our portion, but I would say my, my parents and his brother, definitely. Were the significant factor in it. Yeah. His brother actually did a podcast or some show, I think it was on GQ, and they asked him like, what did he spend his first million dollars on? And it, our wedding was a million dollars. Mm-hmm. And he had mentioned, he was like, oh, I gave my brother x amount of money for his wedding and he's not like he gave us x amount of money for right. our wedding yeah, yeah. that so. is an awesome brother that's a that's a sweet i know be. i know mr wakanda okay <laughs> that's sweet to be able to do those type of things for for some someone else so mm-hmm. one of the things that we talked about with my last guest was bridesmaids and the trend and a question that i've been getting a lot from people is um people brides giving their bridesmaids these dresses these dress requests that are extremely expensive um and of course nine times out of ten the the, the bride is not paying for the, the dresses and so my last bride she actually paid for her bridesmaids dresses because her wedding planner is like all inclusive. He does like dresses and suits and the planner. Mm. She has like this real big high end celebrity planner. And so he does, he basically has direct access on his team to all of these things. So she didn't have to go in anywhere. So their dresses basically were like rolled into her payment. And she only oh, had, four, she had four, four bridesmaids. And so she's like, if I would have had like eight, then that probably wouldn't have been something that we would have been able to, you know, do. But they got these custom dresses made. Did you pay for your bridesmaids dresses? No. Uh, (laughs) I did not pay for their dresses. And they had two dresses. Um, So when I wore my white, they wore a blush pink. 
Okay. When I wore my red, they were all black. Um, okay. But I was very mindful of trying to keep everything under, I think it was under 400 or $300. Okay. So for two dresses, they were, it was like three or $400. And the black dress, they have all worn again. Oh, good. So, okay. and they got to pick it out and it was custom made, like everything. Oh. Yeah. That's really so. good. Did y'all have a conversation beforehand to talk about like budget expectations? Like, hey, to be a so to be a part of this wedding, dress, shoes, jewelry, bachelorette party, did y'all have that overall conversation about cost? No, and I think the reason why, because my friends have been, you know this, been my friends mm -hmm. since middle school. Like, you're right. So it was just kind of like, they're going to be in my wedding. Like, whatever and I need them to right. Yeah, exactly. And we're older now. Yeah. So I mean, like, uh, yeah, and they knew me. I wasn't, honestly, Jen, I did not care about their shoes. I did not care about their necklaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just like, when they picked their dresses, I said, do you like it? And they were like, yeah, I said, I let them pick the color. <laughs> mm. I was, I gave them swatches. I was like, which swatch do y'all like? Right. And they all picked this swatch. And so I was like, perfect. And then, cause the first swatch I picked, they was like, oh, we feel like it's going to wash us out. And so I said, oh, okay, well, which one of these swatches y'all like? And then Kenya mm -hmm. was the one that found the person to make the American dresses. Okay. And she kind of did that. And I just remember her doing my wedding planning, her asking me a question. And she's like, you're going to have to care about something. And I was <laughs> like, <Right now. laughs> and I was just like, well, I mean, like, if do y'all like it? And they were like, yeah, we like it. Okay, then fine. That's what it's going to be. Like, I'm not going to sit here and argue with y'all. We're not going to not be friends because of this. And I was like, if you can't afford something, then that's different. Um, then I can assist you, but no, everybody was down for it. And then even my bachelorette trip, they did a phenomenal job. Um, I wanted to go to Mexico. Okay. And so we went to Cabo. We went to Cabo. And now that one was the, the that mm -hmm. one, they went all out. My friends did a great no, job. Was, I saw the pictures. I'm like, this is, this looks like a time was had. A time was had, baby girl. A time was had. Like we had a penthouse. It was three levels. Mm. Um, everybody pretty much not everyone had a room, but it was one, two, three, four. I feel like there was another bedroom, five. Five bedroom penthouse. And then on the top was a jacuzzi and a shower. Mm. And then it was on an all-inclusive resort. And then we did that. Like we had that place, whatever. My mom had spring for me when I got there to do a massage and like mm -hmm. spend the day in the uh, spa. And then when I came down, we were by the pool. We had dinner. Uh, we rented a yacht, not a yacht. Was it a yacht? Just a boat. Just a <laughs> yeah, yacht. <laughs> and yacht. And we spent the day on the yacht. And when I say we turned up, we turned up. I got stung by a jellyfish, oh, but it was like, it was all fun. And the like, crabs was crawling on me, but I had a blast. Yeah. Um, I got to climb the pole in the club. It just was like, we, they got a section for us. They just spared no expense. And so I'm very thankful to my friends because, you know, they probably was like, by the time she got married, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, and you have been a part of their weddings. And mm -hmm. supportive of them, you know, so it was, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. Look, girl, I'm tired of being a bridesmaid, yeah. but, um, but yeah, it was so much fun. So they did a phenomenal job. It was just, it was, I thought I could go back. I would go back. Yeah. So mm -hmm. earlier you, you mentioned that you were not going to move in. Um, you, you said, I'm not moving in to this house unless we are engaged. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. How long would you have waited? Like, had the proposal not happened at the house warming? Because he clearly played no no games with saying, okay, come on, get your stuff. Up, up, mm -hmm. How long do you think that you would have waited? Uh, waited before we broke up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waited before you were like, look, what is going on? Probably six months. Because when we got engaged, like, 
I was 37, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just like, you talking about having kids, like I have my son, I'm 39. Like, mm -hmm. like we on a time clock here. Yeah. Like I, I can't help when I met you, but <laughs> yeah. like, so yeah, probably maybe six months. I'm like, that yeah. would've been it. Hmm. That is something, but well, you, obviously he wasn't taking that, that chance. Thank God, yeah. He said, look, we wouldn't have had no furniture up up in here. Come on. We have, I picked the furniture. The furniture was delivered. The bed was delivered. I picked everything, everything in the house. It was just like, I yeah. need a ring. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm so glad that all that came together and, and worked out as, as it should. You just definitely deserve all the good and, and happiness. So I'm definitely excited for you. Now that you're you're married and now you, you have this beautiful baby, mm -hmm. how has life changed going from just a wife to now a wife and a mom? There's a lot. The fact that you have three, I don't know how you do it. It's a lot. It's a lot going on over here at all times. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you have three boys. And I remember, I think I talked to you before I got pregnant and I wanted a girl. I yeah. love my son dearly. And I see why, why girls or women are like, oh boy moms, because even though he's only three months, I mean, it's just like, oh, yeah. he's my baby. I mean, like, oh, I just want to eat him up. My but I boys, love being his mom. Yeah. You said what? My boys think I'm the best thing going. So it's like, I know. It just, just wait, girl. It gets so much better. And like, he can be crying and then I can pick him up and he just gives me this look of like, huh, the mama's here. Thank I was like, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, mama. <laughs> I'd be like, Khalif, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to try my best to read you and see what you're doing. But he's just, he's so perfect. Even his little fro is like the perfect little fro. Like his skin is perfect. He's just perfect. Like everything about him is perfect. Oh, good. I really, I do really truly love being a mom. The thing that was a shocker, mm -hmm. people can tell you all day, but until you experience it, it's something different, is um, being a mom is 24 seven. I would, I've never, it made sense, but it didn't make sense, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Like no, literally I, it was like, it's like 20, I mean, like I can't just go in and go, I'm ready to sleep. No, no, mm -mm. no, no. You always so, are needed. You're I always know. needed. You are always thinking about them. And that's the 24 mm -hmm. seven piece, the 24 seven piece, even if you get a break. Right. So yes, yeah, I, I'm going to. I get your mom says I'll take the baby for for the night. Your brain doesn't just say, "Okay, I'm not a mom." Yes. I feel like I wonder if he's okay. Like if, mm -hmm. if he's being held the way like I like to hold him. Like mm -hmm. I know to do like this, and you know, then you. So it's for for me one of the most difficult things about being a mom and a wife is adjusting to. My husband and I have different parenting styles. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to realize that you're not wrong in how you do things. That's mm -hmm. just the way that you do them. And he is, I feel like he's too rough. Like they getting body slammed all across the room. He power slamming people down. It's a whole wrestling match going on in here. And all I can see is somebody crying, somebody hurt. And so just little things, how the stuff that I freak out about or worry about to him, it's like, oh, that's nothing. And I'm like, how is that mm -hmm. nothing? What are, what are, we, what yeah. are we talking about? <laughs> I agree. I agree. Parenting style would probably be the, the hardest transition. And then also like making sure you make time for each other. Yes. Because especially in these first couple of months, it's like, Khalif consumes all my time and like he goes to sleep at bedtime. Oh, we going to both bed at nine o'clock? It's let's go to sleep oh, at nine o'clock. It's like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna put me to bed. And it's like, okay, the baby put me to bed because mm -hmm. I'm trying to snap when he gets Especially with that sound machine. You'd be like, <laughs> you know what? Before I had kids, I never slept with the white noise, mm -hmm. rain sounds playing. My oldest is 10. We mm -hmm. 
with white noise in our house every night, even if I'm not with them. Yeah. Right? Well, I still cut it on. My husband's like, you're obsessed. I'm like, I am. Mm, it's the best sleep you be. And then you don't even know you get sleepy. You're just sitting there and you're like bouncing. You're like, I'm sleeping, man. Like, yeah. Like, I could just go to sleep. <laughs> I could just take a little, a, a little nap right here. Um, yes. What, what is, tell me a piece of advice that you would give to a bride who is listening, who wants to have this luxurious wedding and she does not know where to start. What should she make her, what should her first step be? Her first step should be like, think about the overall experience that you either want to have or you want your guests to have. So that was our biggest thing was we wanted to make sure our guest had a great time from the beginning to the end. And so we actually sat down and talked it through him and I of like, okay, this is what we envision. This is what we see. And then this is what we feel. And this is what it flows to. The other thing um, is... Um, Think about the little bitty details, right? And I, like they say, the, um, they said something, the details and what is it? The devil the, in the details. The devil in the details. I was like, something, the dean and the devil in details. <laughs> I couldn't think of what it was. The dog in the details. <laughs> Look, something with a D in the detail. But the details is what everybody pulls away from my wedding. Like, mm -hmm. yes, they like, oh, you had all of these artists. The food was amazing, right? But they also remember that we had flip-flops for the guests mm -hmm. for the okay. women so they remember oh y'all thought of everything right mm -hmm. by the time you don't know, went from a champagne hour to a res to the wedding to the cocktail hour to the um actual reception my feet are tired yeah. and so we had flip-flops lined up for everybody right and then as the night progressed and this is part of thinking about what you want your guests to have the experience as the night progressed um when all the food was done everyone's been to a wedding and you know ate your food ate your cake and you're like i'm hungry again right mm -hmm. i didn't dance i didn't drink this liquor and so one of the things that we had was whataburger and mm. so we had um we had uh, what you call it, um, honey butter chicken biscuits. Okay. Those things, and so them. it and yeah, and so it was just simple of ordering the chicken biscuits. My wedding coordinator had somebody go pick it up. They had it, you know, they opened twenty four hours, yeah. and then they had it on their. Um, I made these stickers and I stuck our names on there, so it looked like it was Jasca and Cash's yeah. what a burger thing. And I got the idea from my other cousin because at her wedding. She had a food truck. Okay. And so when you left the wedding, it was like, oh, there's more food. And so what are the things people talk about at weddings, right? Food, food. Right. Like those, it was like, everything was great. Like, yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. I love that. And the fact that y'all had Whataburger, mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, yeah. that, that And it wasn't even that expensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's I probably mean, the cheapest thing. Added on $50 a, a head just to serve. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, exactly. Whataburger seems like, look, you should have got a whole, that should have been dinner. Like, come on, get, right. get these burgers and fries and, and, and call it a day. I okay. absolutely love that. So if you had, if you think about your wedding as a whole, right, you know what was spent. What is something that you could have purchased instead of having your wedding? Um, something that I can purchase, maybe a starter home. Does that make sense? Like maybe two bedrooms yes, it makes or three bad bedrooms, two baths, you know, so located. You huh? So you could have had your uh, uh, flip that you could have done. A flip home or how much is a G-Wagon? I, I, you know, how much <laughs> is a G-Wagon? Yeah. A G-Wagon is starts at, I think like, is it 200 or... Hundred and you know what? 
I don't know. Uh, I'm looking it up now. Yeah, so we could have possibly had a 2023 G-Wagon. Now, do you yeah. ever sit back and think like, dang, we should have lowered this? Yeah, hell thing. yeah. Hell yeah. That wasn't my dream to expend right. that much money, right? And I kept saying throughout the whole process, like, let's cut this guest list down. But they wouldn't budge on it. And so it just got to the point where it was like, you know, whatever. Like... <laughs> At this point, it is what it is. It just was a lot. It was a lot, you know, two dresses for not just me, my bridesmaids, mm-hmm. two suits, not just for my husband, but his groomsmen, you yeah. know, orchestrating everything, sitting these people. Like I had spreadsheets galore of this person sits here, this person sits here, this yeah. person sits here, thinking about... um because, you know, Nigerian weddings, they spray, right? And so the thing that takes up a lot of time is who going to sweep up the money? Who going to count the money? So we had money machines. So we- how did, how did, how, yes, how does that work? I, my husband is not Nigerian, but I, I would love to just have a, have a money spray. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I just let's, let's make it my culture now. How does yeah. that work? And what is like, with that amount of guests, what is typically like the return on the money spray? To me, I don't really feel like it's a great return on invest on the, on your investment. That's mm-hmm. me, right? Um, but you do re- re- regroup some of the money that you have spent, right? So how it works is there are a couple people that come in there and they already have like their stacks of one. So like if me and my husband are going to a wedding. He'll be like, go get out $500, like whatever you want to spend. You know, they don't really bring gifts. They bring money. And so therefore he might have five, five, a hundred dollar bills. And then there's normally like money stations in the reception. And so you go to the money stations and then they break it down and they give you $500 in ones. And then mm. throughout the the wedding or whatever, birthday, weight mm-hmm. keeping, Wherever it is, they're going to spray money, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they spray the money. The person recollects it. And then the money that they sprayed, then people will go back and say, well, here, I'm going to sell you $500. Can I have $500 more at once? So okay. you're just basically recycling this money and building upon it. So we got money. Like we had stations for Zelle. We had Cash App. We had um, Venmo. Like everything you can think of. You can right. scan and go. We had three counters and we had three money machines to make it quick, to make it go quickly. Um, By the end of the night, we had two big duffel bags Mm. full of money, but counting it is a pain. Yeah. I mean, it's very disgusting. (laughs) It was like, uh, yeah, they dollar bills and it was like, they had been stepped on. Right. So it had, limes in it it had hair in it it had straws in it it had napkins in it it just was like glitter (laughs) yeah (laughs) so dirty but it and it takes you some time to count all of them once and sometimes you know people were throwing hundred dollars they would just throw a hundred throw a hundred so it's good it's fun it's festive it looks good people like oh my gosh this floor is covered with money and you're like yeah that's probably like five thousand dollars Mm-hmm. So it's it's a good, you know, to get you some money back. But the best way to get you money back is so you can um, have people that count quickly or have money machines. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have those, then it just slows down the process and then people yeah. don't want to wait. Yeah. Uh-huh. Awesome. I never knew how that worked. I absolutely. Ugh. Yeah. You, it's you it's nice. Me. You taught me. So I mean. Much. Yeah, it's just like they just throwing up money. To me, I'm like, just cut me a check. <laughs> right. Just 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 tell me. Like you don't even gotta throw it because now we gotta pick it up and, and Yes. And, it, and, and it, it was like as soon as you would throw it, or as soon as you pick it up, somebody throw more. So and right. it's like they and it's almost like a competition. Right. Like let me see, you know, how much you're gonna throw. Like I know Kamaro, I don't know how much he threw, but I mean like his backpack was full and it was like mm-hmm. He already gifted us a lot and then he yeah. threw a lot. And so it was like, and then like my husband's best friends, they throw a lot. You know, like when um one of his friends got married, he was like, I'm gonna throw two thousand dollars. Like, but they don't give gifts, you know, that's the gift. Right. 
Right. So yeah. I love that. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I love to see it. I, I think it's so, so much fun. Um, this has all been so insightful and so and so good. And I know that this is gonna be an awesome episode. Um, one of the things that we do on here is that we read a Am I the Asshole letter from Reddit. And so okay. we're gonna that we're gonna read that letter and you get to weigh in on whether or not you think that this person is the asshole. Okay, go ahead. I'm and listening. We are going to wrap up. So let's go. Last weekend, so it says, Am I the asshole for telling my wife she shouldn't attend a family wedding if I'm not invited? Last weekend, my 34-year-old wife received an invitation to her eldest sister's wedding. The invitation states that she and our three children are invited with no mention of me. I was insulted and thought my wife would agree that it was rude. But after she spoke to her mother to clarify I wasn't invited, she said she was still going. I said it wouldn't be fair for her to go without me and that I did not give consent for my children to go without their father. She said I'm being unreasonable as her nieces and nephews will be there and it's a big family event. My argument is that if it's so important that the whole family attends, then I should be invited. If not, then it can't be that important and she shouldn't go. Who's the asshole here? The wife is the asshole. You think the wife is the asshole? Okay, so why? Well, okay, it's... it's First of all, there has to be a reason why he's not invited, right? Okay. So if we don't know the reason, it's kind of hard. But speaking mm -hmm. as like from a wife perspective, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I would probably be like, well, that's not right. You're going to invite me, my kids, but not my husband. Like, and you talking about this as family. So it's, it's kind of like, I can see both sides of it, right? But I think she should be like, you know, well, no, I'm not coming because you, you're not going to intentionally not invite my husband. But, but there's probably a reason that he's not invited. Yeah, I feel like this one is lacking some context because why, mm -hmm. would, why would they just leave you out? And then I Correct. feel like he's being petty by mm -hmm. saying, well, if I can't go, then my kids can't, can't go. Because it's not like you're saying that because... You don't think they aren't going to be safe. Correct. You're not saying that because you feel like something's going to happen to them. You're just saying that because you know it's going to bother your wife. And that's why right. I see that he's the asshole in this situation simply based on that, the, the context that we have. Based mm -hmm. on the context that we have, you are being petty about the kids going because you aren't invited. And so you want to try to make it a point to assert your dominance and mm -hmm. obviously, put my foot down yeah why family don't want you to come what yeah that's that's my only thing there has to be a reason that the mom is like no we don't want him to come yeah. and the reason why she's like well i don't want him to come there has to be a reason i do i do understand his perspective that's why i kind of feel like the wife you might be being a little asshole they both assholes put it like yeah. that like y'all like assholes. Yeah, we need to figure out why you can't come, but you can't just say they not invite you. What you do? You did something. What did you do? Mm -hmm. Justin, thank you. This was you welcome. You, you are welcome. The sweetest thing, and I'm so happy that life has brought you to the point that it is now. And you deserve all the good and loving on that husband and that sweet baby. Because mm -hmm. girl, time is the thief of joy and i never understood that until i had kids mm. and you look up and my son is 10. my other baby will be nine next week mm -hmm. lennox is two he's like, two already he's two and it's like where i feel like you just had him i feel like i just had him and but he's two and knowing that that's my last baby. I'm not having any more kids. It's it's like this kind of like, I don't want any more, right? But yeah. it's still this like sadness sometime of, man, this is, this, this, this is it. So soak it all in and just enjoy every phase, whether it's a hard day or easy day, it is, 
it's you're gonna blink and it's gonna be over with. So just soak it in so so much. Please tell everybody where they can follow you and your amazing brand. So if you want to follow Lavish Locks, Jaska the wig maker, yes. um, even though I have braids in right now that I need to desperately take out. Anyways, I just had a baby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can follow me at Lavish Locks Hair. That's L-A-V-I-S-H-L-O-C-S Hair um, at on IG. Or you can follow my real estate page, which is Jessica usman realtor i think that's what it is and then you can follow me on tiktok at i love tiktok at lavishly jessica or jessica the realtor um on tiktok i think those are all of the handles yeah sign up for her email list because her realtor email list be coming out with some good stuff okay. some stuff that's going on and some little stuff that's happening in the area yeah. i look thank forward you. to it every time it comes so thank you I, I try girl <laughs> If you're looking to buy, lease, sale, commercial or residential, contact me. Come to please. Us. Yes, please. Thank you again. I will let you get back to your sweet baby. Yes, and I got to go pump. Yes, understand, <laughs> understand. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Wedding to Wife. Be sure to follow us on social media, on Instagram at Wedding to Wife Podcast, TikTok, Wedding to Wife and on YouTube at Wedding to Wife. This episode will not only air on our podcast on Apple and Spotify, but also the video version with some pictures will be on all of our social media platforms and YouTube. So until next time, I will see you later. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, Jan.